Tens of millions of rands being siphoned out of a company wholly owned by the Public Investment Corporation has emerged. According to a Sunday Times report by investigative journalist Sabelo Skitti, more than 150 million rand has been siphoned by a group of individuals and companies linked to the PIC's company secretary. Sabelo Skitti joins us now to give us a broader description. Very good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for joining us, Sabelo. More than 150 million rand siphoned out of a company owned by the PIC and in understanding the composition, the PIC is tasked with looking after more than two trillion rand belonging to the government employees a pension fund, the Department of Employment and Labor's Compensation Fund, as well as the UIF. I mean, um, perhaps let's get more details from you around these shocking revelations. How did this all happen? Yeah, so Paul, I mean, this is, for me, it's quintessentially the story of how, you know, uh, money gets taken out of the PIC. Um, you first need to get um, a hold of the company. So you therefore need someone on the other side, on the PIC side, you know, on the investor side, either a senior official, a board member, um, you know, or in this case, the company secretary. Um, she then sets things in motion by, make, by ensuring that um, they appoint people that are close to her. Um, to the board of this poultry producer Daybreak, one of the top three, by the way, um, a company that was mired in controversy in sort of like um, mid 2014-15, um, um, was on the comeback. You know, they had started mending this business um, and had even posted a profit when all of this happened. So when this new board came in, um, within a couple of weeks, they basically were at war with the current executives. Um, at that firm, and you know, before you knew it, um, a majority of the executives had been hounded out, um, and then you know, the people that were le left there could basically come in and start siphoning the money out through procurement. So what we've been able to to see is that um, there's a law firm that was you know quickly engaged by Daybreak. This law firm is owned by a former business partner of the PIC company secretary Bongani Matebula the lady that I had said had set things into motion. Mm -hmm. uh, he has since earned about 116 million, um, you know, doing business with Daybreak. A lot of those invoices we know um, are basically fictitious. Um, some of them are double charging. You know, some of them, you know, are for mundane things like studying the state of capture report. Um, you know, so all of these monies were able to be siphoned out through what on paper looks to be legitimate transactions. But when you look a bit deeper, you find that some of these transactions are either double payments or don't exist at all. So in following the paper trail, what did you then uncover about the PIC company secretary Bongani Matebola's conduct and um, the relationship with the Daybreak board chair, Lerato Nahe? Did, was, was there a declaration of relations and, and also detail on how this money was spent? Yeah. So this was what for me is, is one of the worrying things, you know, particularly because the PIC, again, you know, is, is sitting with two trillion rand in what essentially is public funds. And again, if you look at, you know, an institution like the Government Employees Pension Fund, this is a defined benefit fund, which means that if I started working for the state 10, 20 years ago, um, there is a set amount that I'm supposed to earn. You know, it doesn't, it's not determined by the strength of the RAND, um, you know, or, or, or where my money is invested. Um, it's defined by the fact that I'm making a contribution and I will get a set amount. Now, if you get funds like that, um, you know, being, you know, uh, RAN in a free, free willy way, what you then get is that you get a risk on the government because the government will have to fund whatever shortfall there is when suddenly civil servants are retiring and suddenly the PIC doesn't have enough money, you know, for the GEPF um, to, to fulfill that contract. So that for me was one of the worrying things. And in that context, it was worrying to see that the PIC had been sitting on a forensic investigation since January. Um, which basically unearthed what Bongani Matebula had done in the appointment, um, you know, of Lerato Nache to the board. She never declared, number one, that Mr. Nache was someone that she was, she was known to um, and was someone that she had served on another board. Um, secondly, it was found that Mr. Nache's curriculum vitae, or his CV, 
um, was not sourced through normal accepted channels via the PIC. In fact, it was Bongani Machebula herself who took his CV and gave it to her deputy for, for, for his name to be considered. Um, another thing that was found by that forensic investigation was that there's a possibility that some of these individuals were not on the database um, for the PIC to lift nominee directors from at the time that this was done. Um, and when they were investigating, trying to find, you know, electronic um, evidence of what is written down in emails, for instance, they found that a certain period around when these nominees were made, um, you know, Bongani Matibola and her deputies' emails had been erased. Um, they also found that their hard drives on their laptops had also been cleaned. You know, so a lot of the evidence that would have, you know, shown whether there was any process or not um, is now missing. And of course, the forensic then, um, you know, reaches the conclusion that, you know, almost all of the PIC's policies and how, you know, these nominee directors are appointed um, was not followed at all. So with the report by the JGL Forensic uh, Services, uh, you know, exposing uh, all of this, in terms of what's happening as you and I speak, in terms of accountability, I mean, you speak about a huge chunk of the evidence being erased. What, what's happening at the moment? Have any arrests been made? Where is this matter standing? Because you say the PIC has been sitting with the report for quite some time. Yeah, so this is what for me is one of, you know, the most interesting things and is concerning is that the PIC is unwilling um, to take myself or the public into its confidence and let us know whether any action was taken, firstly against Bongani Matebula and her deputy, um, and then secondly against the directors, you know, at daybreak, who, um, you know, all of this malfeasance is happening under. We don't know if the PIC has opened any, you know, criminal charges against any of these individuals, but what we do know is that at the moment the board is still in place, Bongani Matebula is still in place, um, and I'm willing to put my head on the block here and say that probably as recently as Friday, money was coming out of daybreak to these, um, you know, related entities. Some shocking revelations, uh, Sabela. We're going to have to leave it there for now. Sabela Skitti, investigative journalist at the Sunday Times, uh, talking to us about uh, some of the money being siphoned out of a company wholly owned by the PIC. Let's.